understanding. So it is a complex uh, study that we study about process capability studies. So process capability studies help us to understand the sigma level of the process. So in this, most of the industries use this, something on this CPCPK or PPPPK to understand the process capability. So this is the ability of the process to meet the customer expectations. So it's given by short-term process capability studies or long-term process performance values. So CPCPK gives the short-term process capability and long-term process performance is given by PPPK values. So what's the difference between them as the name implies? Short-term, we are looking into the ability of the process to meet the customer expectations when we are studying for a shorter period or when we look into a short term from, uh, from one day to another day or one time to another time. For a shorter period, we are trying to see the capability of the process to meet customer expectation. Long-term is the overall process performance, how the process is performing can be studied by a PP, PPK values. So the difference between the short-term process capability and PP, PPK long-term process performance depends upon how do we take the data from the process. Are we taking uh, regular data at shorter time interval and seeing the short-term process capability or are we looking into the long-term data irrespective of how we are taking the data in a, are we take, so overall data from the process, we are looking into a long-term process performance. So for a long-term process performance, we use the uh, usual standard deviation calculations are used to find the long-term uh, standard deviation is used to find the long-term process performance. Short-term process, process performance, uh, is usually looked into uh, PP, PPK values. So the average industrial Z-score is four sigma and the world-class process performance is six sigma. So we try to see whether our process is good or not, or the, is meeting the average industrial Z-score. So if it is meeting the average industrial Z-score, we say that our process is capable. If it is not able to meet the average industrial Z-score, then we say our process is not Capable. So there are calculations behind it. So in this example, I'm just giving that example where the USL and LSL we have known. What is the USL is 60 days and LSL is 30 days. The mean is 45.2 days. Standard deviation is 4.4 days. And the PP value is calculated by USL minus LSL divided by the six sigma overall standard deviation, one point. One four is the overall standard PP value. PPU and PPL, the minimum of PPU and PPL becomes the PPK value. So that is where we can say that PPL is, uh, when we substitute the value, we get 1.15. PPU, when we substitute, we get 1.12. So minimum among the PPU and PPL is 1.12. That becomes a PPK value. So the Z-score is three times PPK value. So that it becomes 3.26 is the process sigma level. Or process sigma level is 3.36. So the average industrial Z-score is four. And we say our process is not capable because it, it has to be at least four sigma to say that our process is capable because it is 3.36. We say a process is not capable of meeting the customer expectations where the average industrial Z-score given by Motsola is four to say that a process is capable and our process, which is the, the order fulfillment process is at 3.36 sigma, which says that our process is not able to meet the customer expectations or the process is not capable. So this is just how do we calculate using PPPPK values. So CPCPK value has the same equations. Only difference is the short-term standard deviation is calculated from a shorter period of time. And that is used for CP, CPK calculation. So this is how the process capability study. So this, I just want to give a glimpse on uh, how this, from the PPK values, how we can say from a Six Sigma perspective, whether the process is capable or not. So we three times PPK gives us the Sigma score of the process. And it has to be at least four Sigma to say our process is capable. So that is how the process capability is studied. So that we also study the 
uh, stability of the process in the measure phase to understand the current process performance. So we understand it from a run chart or an expert R chart. So there are two different charts being used. And this is uh, developed by a software called the screen tab. So run chart and expert R chart are two different charts usually help us to understand the stability of the process to help us to identify the presence of special cause variations, which I have explained uh, earlier. So a presence of special cause variations can be studied using uh, a run chart and the expert R chart. So here uh, I've used a tool called as Minitab. The Minitab help us to understand what is a process stability. So just to, uh, so you'll be taught this Minitab when you come to mini green belt in detail will be uh, taught about this. So the same, the order fulfillment time, I'm just copying it in the Minitab. So Minitab is compatible with the Excel. So we can just copy that into the mini tab worksheet. And then we can go to stat quality tools and run chart. And this help us to understand how to create a run chart in the process, order fulfillment process. So in this order fulfillment process, we are saying that let's say subgroup size, we have taken, let's say two samples every, day so it's become the subgroup size that we are looking into and click ok and then we get something like this so this is where we can see that if any of the key values are given or the probability values are given which help us to understand whether the special causes are there so p value or it is called as probability value the probability value is calculated based on certain equations probability values of values are compared are compared with a reference value. Reference value is 0 0.05. So for each of this reference value is P value. So there are four P values that we are seeing or four special cause variations that is possible here. The clustering, mixtures, trends and oscillation. I'll just explain what it is. In the next slide. So this p-values of clustering, mixtures, trends, and oscillation. If any p-value is any p-value is greater than 0 0.05, then we say that that trend or pattern is present present in the process. And this is because of special cause variation, because of special cause variations. So the special cause variations can be studied by the trends and patterns in the process, by the p-value, the clustering, mixtures, trends and oscillation, help us to understand if any particular trend or pattern is present. If that present, if it is, I mean, it is less than, so it is it has to be less than 0 0.05. If p-value is greater than, 0 0.05, then no special cause variations are present. So the process is stable. So because of special cause variation, so there is no special cause variations and process is stable. Process is stable. That is interpretation that we'll be looking into. So because of special cause variation, we say that process is unstable. So this is how a run chart help us to understand the presence of special cause variation. So what you see in the blue dots are the, the mean values for each data and the, the smaller dots that you are seeing. So the, the other dots are the each individual values has been plotted there. So this is where the individual values as the samples have been looked into and the average is given as a mean. And we are seeing that the P values are given. So if any of the P values are less than 0 0.05, that particular trend or pattern is present and special cause variations are present in the process. Since all the P values that we are seeing here is greater than 0 0.05, there is no special cause variation in the process. So that is how a run chart is interpreted. And what is this run chart and 
helping this. So clustering are groups of points in one area on the chart. So six or more points when it comes together, there is a clustering of data. Trends is a sustained drift in the data or either up and down. So when it is uh, six points are increasing or continuously increasing or it is decreasing continuously, six points are increasing, then we say there is a trend pattern. Mixtures is when we have frequent crossing over of the center line is there, it's, there is a mixture pattern. Usually 14 points should not cross over like this. So when 14 points are uh, crossing over the center line, uh, this is a uh, mixture patterns are there. Oscillation again, uh, 14 points, if it is fluctuating up and down, we say there is a oscillation pattern. So if any of these patterns are present, then the P value uh, would be less than 0 0.05 for that particular a pattern or a trend. So that becomes the, so we say that a special cause variations are present in the process. So that is how the process stability studies are done using run chart. Similarly, when we look into a variable chart or a control chart, the special causes can be seen very much using it. The red squares will be seen in the mini tab when we create. So I'll be showing that uh, when we look into control phase, I'll be showing this. So this is where a special cause variations beyond the control limits when it is going. So red squares will be seen and within the control limits or outside the control limits, there are certain rules which looks into those special cause variations. So red squares indicate the special cause variations. So there are different rules are there. Six is the number six rule has been failed. One, the first rule or first uh, rule. So there are different rules which is looked into or test which has been done to identify the presence of special cause variations. So red squares indicate the presence of special cause variations.